You can download the DVD to the Mocha Fan Gigabo. Show them to get to the Kaganada. Welcome to Skippable News. I'm Jason Brown. I'm Jimmy T. And we haven't been here for a while. Where have we been, Jason? Oh, like Santa's little helpers up at the North Pole. We've been busily creating new content for you guys to watch. Yeah. No, we don't hammer stuff. We do cut. A lot ends up on the cutting room floor. But seriously, we have a new show coming out Thursday, December 22nd. It'll be on Channel 3, YouTube, and Rumble. Or you can listen to it on uh, 92.5 or 96.5 at 8 p.m. on Thursdays. It is called This Crazy Life, starring Stacey Powell, Jason Brown, and directed, filmed, and audio by Jimmy T over here. So if it sucks, you know why. But no, seriously, you did a good job. I think you guys are going to really enjoy the show. It talks about this crazy life. Some of the subject is grief, uh, ancestry. Uh, we also had uh, Eastern Sierra Pride on, and we also had another group. We talked about uh, breast cancer. Breast cancer. And we have many more guests that are continuing to come in and film. We have episodes piling up, ready for you guys to watch. Let's talk about Stacy Powell. She's a longtime resident of Mammoth Lakes, and she has a new book out called Empty Cupboards. And it's a series of short essays that she wrote uh, about a mental health breakdown that she had about 20 years ago. It's a great read. You can get a copy from Spellbinder or the Bookie Joint or even from Amazon.com. I mean, it's, it's everywhere. You can get a copy of this. Uh, but like we said, tune in December 22nd, Channel 3, YouTube, or Rumble, or listen to it on Thursday nights at 8 p.m. on 92.5 or 96.5. Or if you're interested in some of the other shows that we've got coming out, or possibly you want to know what time it's on Channel 3, we have a website that you can go to. It is LPPTV.us, right here, LPPTV.us. Hopefully it went that way and I did it right. If not, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. All right, so. But that's not why we're here. You're right, we did a shameless plug. Why are we here, Jimmy? We're here to wish your family, your friends, everyone out there in TV land, Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year. Yeah, in that order. In order. Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Come and on. whatever other holiday you feel like celebrating in between. Anyway, so, we are really grateful for you guys as viewers. We're happy that you continue to watch Skippable News. We look forward to creating more content for you. Like we said, go out to lpptv.us, and you'll be able to see all the new shows that we have coming out in the next year, 2023. So, once again, Happy Hanukkah, Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, and Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Hello, I am Jeff Gabriel with the Eastern Sierra Interpretive Association. We want to wish you happy holidays from our family to yours. As we close out the year, we ask you to consider donating to the Eastern Sierra Interpretive Association. Your generous gift helps support the many interpretive and educational programs we offer throughout the year. The Winter Adventure Series, Campfire Programs, History Conference, Snowshoe Hikes, and so many more events and programs. To donate, please go to sierraforever.org and click the Join or Give button and make your year-end contribution. Again, happy holidays and thank you for your kind gift. I am Jeff Gabriel with the Eastern Sierra Interpretive Association. Educate, inspire, explore. Welcome to Skippable News. I'm Jason Brown. I'm Jimmy T. And we have a special guest for this Christmas edition. We have the Grinch. Welcome, Grinch. Thank you for having me. Oh, we're delighted to have you and that you, you made the long journey here from Whoville. Uh, let me tell the viewers why we have the Grinch in the studio today. You might have watched the historical documents about how Cindy Lou uh, took the Grinch through the actual meaning of Christmas, not the presents around the trees or the stuff, but the family and the love and the being togetherness and on that day his heart grew two sizes larger but unfortunately the documentaries kind of just leave us there we don't know what has happened to the Grinch since then now uh, you were born in 1953 and I think the first historical document about you if I'm correct it was 1957 is that right correct it's been a very very long time could you could you tell me though uh, over the years how Christmas has impacted you I can uh, first of all, Ted was the person who brought me to life, and we've been good friends ever since. He has now gone to the happy hunting ground, I think, but 
Um, I do miss him. And the first thing that had to happen, imagine if your heart started growing bigger and bigger and you'd have to go to a cardiologist because that's what we always do. We go Did it hurt your chest cavity? To find out whether there's room in your chest for a, a heart that's quite a bit bigger and what effect will it have on your stamina and all that kind of stuff. He said, no, it couldn't have grown is what he told me. And but I it said, had to have. It had to have. Because I'm a very different person now, thanks to uh, my experiences, and it's uh, really wonderful. Well, the documentary states that your heart grew warm and fuzzy. Is it still warm and fuzzy to this day? Well, you I'm still have that feeling fuzzy, about Christmas. So I think so. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That is absolutely awesome. Uh, how uh, how did Max take it? Well, Max has, is no longer with me because he was a dog and he lived to about, uh, I think, 90 uh, human years. Okay. So he was quite elderly, but he was very talented. He wanted to go on with his movie career. And I said, well, I really need you next to me and help me with w w what I seem to be on, what path I'm taking now. And he said, okay, that would be all right. And he was very talented, though. I have to say that. Um, he wanted to play a laddie like Lassie. Oh. And But that just didn't work out. You know how Hollywood is here today, gone tomorrow, sort of. Well, he must have gotten typecasted, too. Yeah. So, But he had a long and happy life. And he really had fun with some of the movies about our lives together. Yep. And that was nice. Aren't some of the uh, offspring living with you now? Of the dog? Yeah, Max. Yes, yes, the puppies, you mean. Well, they're not puppies anymore, are they? No. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Max was quite the father. He enjoyed making puppies. Oh. Isn't, wow. he, isn't he also the official breed of Whoville? That I don't know. I, maybe. So He's Cindy... sort of like a, the universal dog, though, I think. He's... What everyone wants in a dog, and that's why they get dogs, is because he's affectionate and loyal and even creative, and he has fun, and even in worse times. So, Cindy Lou, you guys became good friends. Yes. She's uh, gone on to quite a career. And you mentored her into that career, right? Yeah. Uh, originally, she, it's, you, you said she wanted to go into acting, but you led her into, is it true, real estate? Yes. You, why real estate? Well, because you can make a lot of money with that still. I, I mean, there's good years and bad years, but she was a natural salesperson, so mm. I thought that would be a great place for her to be. How, how did things end up between you and Mayor Augustus May? I just ignore him. You really? know how government people are. Uh, <laughs> I think he's pulling our leg. He's your good friend, isn't he? Yes. <laughs> The mayor who will uh, council. I, I have to have a sense of humor. I thought. I thought. When you look like I do. I thought December twenty sixth became the Grinch of Whoville Day. Yeah. Okay. And we talked about He's Max. A bit past... of a stuffed shirt, though, don't you think? What's that? Uh, isn't he a bit of a stuffed shirt? Who the mayor? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Politicians, you get that. Yeah, you do. I don't think you're going to be able to ever get away from that when it comes to politics. Uh, tell us about the legacy. Uh, what happened in 2019? <laughs> um, Is it when the Regal Cinemas rated you oh, yes. as the number two Christmas villain well, of all yeah, time? I've been, I, I have really made a career of being a star. And you know, when I was in the Bishop Parade... I was amazed at how many kids wanted to come up and hug me. I wasn't prepared for that. They really don't see me as the Grinch any longer. They see me like a teddy bear, and they love to pet my uh, fur mm. and hug me, and mm. they wanted their pictures taken. You got me. left far behind in the parade because of that. I did. I that. got behind the You're horses. You were supposed to be handing out candy, and I think that a lot of people by the end of the parade thought you'd return to being the Grinch, but I'm fair to say that wasn't the case. You no. were actually just trying to catch back up. No, but behind the, the horses is not where you want to be. Oh. <laughs> Let's just say, and I'll leave it at that. Interesting. <laughs> so you stayed friends with Cindy Lou, and after she married uh, Hans Gruber, 
all their children, did they name them after you, part of your name? Uh, of course. What part of that name was and, that? And, you know, I noticed in the parade there were so many people pretending to be me and doing a pretty good job of it. I, but I it saw seemed, that. But it seemed to be not the not my bad times, but my good times. And so that was kind of neat, I think. Mm. So they saw you as what you were before, not what you are now. No, no. just oh. the opposite. Oh, just the opposite. Yeah. Okay. I seem to be a love item for a lot of them. I can't explain that. But because uh, my face is hardly a love face, but right. everybody got used to what I looked like, I think. That's what Robin says about yeah. Jimmy. Really? Yeah. So yeah. you Not have a, a great. Jimmy and I kind of have, you know, a look that's pretty startling. Yeah. So you have the face that only a mother Grinch could love? Yeah. Okay. And grandfather. I mean, and so basically, and grandfather. The same. Is Lynch's, Lynch's, Lynch's. <laughs> right. If we just said that Robin says that Jimmy has the same face, then he just said the same thing that only a mother could love. Oh. But talking about that, to go to a different subject, Jimmy is the best son any mom could have. For sure. He was there for Thanksgiving. He's going back to the rest home uh, with her for Christmas. I mean, if I were to have. I'm not a mom. That would be odd. But <laughs> I would want a son like Jimmy to come visit me if I was in a rest home. So, Jimmy, thank you. You're the best. Thank you. You know, Jason, nowadays anything seems possible. <laughs> I'm going to be able to be a mom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, did you mention Thanks, your Grinch? I think you your heart's grown maybe a little bit too large. <laughs> did you you say your father was a Grinch? My father? Yes. Yes. And your grandfather was a Grinch? Yes. So you've got generations of Grinch in your blood? Right. But I sort of perfected it, I think, living up in that horrible cave and looking down on all the happy people. It made me kind of feel frustrated and sort of angry, I think. I'd like to... Everything's about revolves around money. Tell yeah. us about your royalties. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How are you doing I'm financially because of this? I'm not about my royalties. Oh, you're not? Okay. But that's what that's what I learned it was that Christmas had become too materialistic. So and it's not about would, the money to you. Uh -huh. It just keeps coming in, but that's not what it's about. Right. And uh, so I, you know, I'm really glad I discovered that because the, there's like riots at the front of stores and things, and it just seems like they've forgotten what it's all about. Um, but. And, and, and today, people still get short-sighted on that. Yeah. Yeah. They do. Well, we appreciate you coming on to the show, and we want to remind people it's not about the presents, as we learned with the Grinch. It's about family. It's about loving one another, and it's about coming together. So we hope you enjoy this Christmas season. We hope that you, 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 uh, you have a safe holiday. Anything else you want to say, Grinch, before we leave? No. That's good. All you right. captured it. All right. Well... Thank you for watching. We'll see you next year. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and Happy Hanukkah. Hello, I'm Jeff Gabriel with the Eastern Sierra Interpretive Association. I'm joined today with Diana Wood, who is our Program Operations Director for ECF, talking about our free snowshoe walks. Thanks. ECF will be offering free snowshoe walks every Thursday in January, starting January 5th. These are from 11.30 to 1 p.m. and we'll meet out front of the Mammoth Lakes Welcome Center. Again, this is free thanks to the snowshoes provided by Devil's Postpile National Monument. No experience is necessary and it's open to all ages. For more information, visit sierraforever.org and click on calendar to see all of our events. Hope to see you there. I'm Jenna Wood. I'm Jeff Gabriel with the Eastern Sierra Interpretive Association Educate, inspire, explore. Hello, you're tuned in to I on Inyo Restaurants today, a little different. We have uh, Rosie Garcia here who's going to talk about all things Amigos. I hope you know Amigos and have eaten there. But if you haven't, you'll want to after hearing her. Morning, how are you? Good morning, I'm doing Good. well. Yeah. You, Thank you. you I, I always enjoy seeing you. Thank we, you. We go there quite frequently because yeah. it's sort of just down the street, but the yeah. food is always wonderful. Thank you. So let's talk about Amigos. Um, how did you get to Amigos? You own it. It's a kind of complicated owning, but we won't go into that. 
But how long have you been in Amigos? I have been at Amigos for almost four years. <clears throat> um, and it seems like 15? Yes, some days it sure does. Um, but <clears throat> Neil and Tony Zankar gave me the opportunity to run Amigos. Uh, it's a five-year uh, contract, but it has been quite an experience. And, and you had experience already in restaurants, certainly. And yes. you were telling me your, your family came to Mammoth originally, and your dad ran a restaurant there. Yep. So you've been doing it a long time. We, we don't have to say how long. <laughs> um, yes, I was honored to start in the restaurant business when I was uh, 12 and loved it then and love it now. Um, it's in my blood, I say. But um, yeah, it's been a, a long ride here and there. Several restaurants in Mammoth, several restaurants down here. But All Mexican restaurants? No, no, or? no, no. Um, I've been a little bit of everywhere, all kinds of food, but mainly serving and now running the restaurants. It's a whole different uh, experience. Yeah. In what way? Um, there's a lot more. <laughs> oh, there's, to it, you mean? Yeah. So there's the staff, there's the uh, ordering, there's the... Um, so you do all the ordering or...? Yes. I do it all. Wow. All of it. <laughs> and you have, I, I think you said 15 employees though. Yes. But you're, you're the person who the buck stops with. You yes. have to do it all. All of, and the piles of paperwork that sometimes get a little high. Yeah, I still have to do that. That's not fun. That's the least fun of all of it. What's the most fun? Uh, the Obviously, you, there's fun to it. <laughs> yes. Mean, fun. Yeah. But... The customer service. Yeah. That's what I love the most about it. Just being able to provide a meal that someone will most of the time love. And even when we don't, we try to make it better. But um, yeah, just to, to be able to feed a family or an individual and they have a good meal, a good experience and go home on or on out their day. Laughing Parrot frequently eats there, as you know. They do. Uh, Jason and Jimmy, who is our cameraman today. Yes. And I get to eat with them occasionally, which uh, I, I have several favorites. Uh, we were talking about that as well. Yeah. But I can testify that you have wonderful uh, repartee and, and relationship with each customer. So each customer, I think, comes away feeling special. You yes. You just have that open personality. Thank you. Yes, we, um, we definitely strive for customer service. Um, I personally um, enjoy the locals uh, very, very much so. And it's because of the locals that we are there. How, how many can you uh, sort of say they're 50% locals and 50%? 70% really are local. Mm -hmm. That, that means you're doing a lot of things right because yeah. they wouldn't be there if you weren't. So yeah, 70 The food must be good and the yes. atmosphere is good. Yeah. Congratulations. I, I hope so. We, we definitely try. Yeah. And we have off days, but we try. So um, let's see. What do you think is the most fun, the customer service you said? Yeah. And um, what about how did you survive the, the lockdown? The uh, lockdown. Because that's a lot of restaurants didn't for various reasons. The only reason we survived is because of the local support. Um, I can name everyone, but there's a lot of local support and people that just on a daily basis support me, support the restaurant and our employees. And I couldn't do with those that stuck in it with me through it all, um, one of the main uh, cooks, and then everyone else that's kind of joined the team. Like, I couldn't have done it without them. No. Mm -mm. That's loyalty. Yes, that's what it, really <laughs> it is. is. It and really is. Because of you. Yep. We'll come back to Rosie Garcia, um, owner of Amigos, and we'll talk about some other things that are coming up. So, okay. um, this has been Chris Langley. Uh, welcome. You are tuned in to Eye on Inyo Restaurants, and we are talking still with Rosie Garcia, the owner, manager, bon vivant, and everything in between person of Amigos 
here in Bishop, one of my very favorite places to eat. And uh, she's going to be talking a little more about the history and the people who started it, uh, the, the restaurant, 30 years ago. And then we will go into life on the roller coaster a little bit more, <laughs> what it's like. She sa I said, what's it like to run your restaurant? She said, it's like being on a roller coaster. Yep. I'm kind of, I have two minds about roller coasters. So <laughs> anyway, hi, good hi. morning. Good morning. Good to be here. <laughs> so talk a little more about the beginnings of the restaurant. The beginning was uh, October 1st of 1992 with uh, Neil and Javier Brelas, uh, Neil Zekar and Javier Brelas to be exact. Um, then there was a, a split where Neil has had uh, or had the restaurant for 30 years, um, but he started it because he loved uh, Mexican food. Therefore, it was a dream of his to have a Mexican food restaurant. Did you know him very well? Or? I did. I did. Did, did he has his hands in things? Oh, yes. Uh, like if the taco wasn't right? Yes. This is what it needed? Yes, he would... Um, come in and tell you if it was missing a little bit of this or a little bit of that oh, or yeah so he knew what he was um, looking for the flavor he was looking for um, so we have his recipes his original recipes um, is what we're um, shooting for with the occasional uh, Wednesday specials that we throw in there that is our creation of our current staff or current cooks um, does it change or is it always the it same? It does special? change every Wednesday. We have kind of the margarita chicken on the first Wednesday of every month. Mm. Um, but um, And then we have the molcajete on the third Wednesday of every month. But the other Wednesdays, we just kind of randomly whatever we want to or whatever they want to put together. Um, my favorite of the um, recipes, original recipes, is the Saturday special, which is... Um, the tropical enchiladas you could then those are my favorite and those are reliably every saturday every saturday okay yeah so i, I love your fish tacos as you know <laughs> I, I sort of discovered them because i i like fish tacos but yours are terrific thank you and the tostado as well thank you because i can eat it for three days <laughs> it's a big meal That's it is a, a very meal. big meal but yeah so tony or uh, tony and neil gave me the opportunity uh, four years ago, almost, uh, December 1st will be four years, um, to run it. And I am ever so grateful for that because, um, yeah, it's been a roller coaster ride because of, you know, the... Well, let's talk about supply chains. Oh my, you... that too. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's still... A, that, that's a challenge, yeah. I know. I, I'm sure it's a challenge for all stores and mm -hmm. businesses, but yeah. talk about it, how it affects you. For us, <clears throat> um, it's inconsistent as to what particular product, whether it be a and meat... And that's probably even hard, makes it harder yes. than you can't get it we, anytime. Yes. So we can't get it and we have limited storage, so we have to kind of pick and choose, kind of call different vendors, uh, call different, even fellow businesses in town that can help us out and have helped us out. So it's just, it's hard still to this day to run the day-to-day -day and keep on top and making sure that we have what the customer wants. Is it getting better or? Because I, I haven't when you heard think, it mentioned much well, just lately. You, but. Just when you think it is, then it's not. And it's, it's just consistent where I think pre everything that happened, it was just kind of consistent with the product. And now it's a lot more up and down and pricing is another factor as, you know, with fuel and everything else that we're going through. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. But you, you made it through the toughest part, I hope. I hope I it's hope the toughest is, part. I hope this is the And that the was the pandemic. Yes. And we've talked a little bit about that. Yes. And you mentioned that locals are really helped you through that period. Yes. And you told me uh, how many, how much of what percentage of 70. your seventy percent. Mm -hmm. So it's really a local per yes. place for yeah. people to go. Yeah, it is. And I, and they would know if you weren't doing a great consistent job. So. And they would tell me. Yeah. And I I, I appreciate that. Like yeah. I'm always very very like let me know. We'll always try to make it better. Um, every now and then we have. 
new employees, and they always um, they do their best, but every now and then we'll forget maybe dressing with a salad to go or certain little things, but we definitely strive to do our best. Yeah, you mentioned customer service. Yes as being important to you. Very important. And, and I think a source of great enjoyment too. Yes. In a funny sort of way. Yeah. It's rewarding. Yeah. At the end of the day. Hello, I'm Fred Rowe from Sierra Bright Dot Fly Fishing Guide Service. I've been teaching guiding, writing and lecturing on fly fishing since 1982. Well, let's get to this week's fly fishing report. <laughs> Well, snowstorms, the best part of them is when the sun comes out. We've got sun for several days. Fishing, well, keep telling everybody, fish have new winter hours, 11 to 1, because that's when the insect activity is at its best, and that's when I'm doing, catching most of my fish is in that time frame. Not to say I can't catch fish before and after, but winter fishing, it's so gentlemanly, 11 to 1. Okay, let's get to the fishing. Well. Upper Owens River, it's still tough to get in. You definitely need snowmobile skis, snowshoes, or walk-in to get in there. And the big fish, those trophy fish, they really just haven't shown up yet. Okay, let's go over to Hot Creek. Same thing, gotta access it, walking over the snow. Okay, so you're gonna put some work in there. Going into the canyon, uh, yeah, it's worth the effort if you really wanna fish in there. Uh, there's some bigger fish coming there because they're just not getting fishing pressure. Over at the interpretive site, a little easier to get into. A um, little bit of a hatch, again, in that middle of the day, 11 to 1 time. It just may be the occasional blueing olive. Down the hill, Lower Owens River. Yeah, that's where you want to fish right now. It's fishing great. We fished the other morning, it was cold. By the time we got out of there, about 11.30 or noon, God, it was warm. We were actually peeling layers off. Okay, it's nymph fishing in there, and it's fishing good. We're using stone flies, my stoner powder for the weight on the Euro nymph, and then we're using beadhead flashback pheasant tail nymphs, hot spot pheasant tail nymphs, and olive quildagons. And that's what's producing the bulk of my fish in the Lower Owens right now. Over at Bishop Creek Canal, well, we're fishing good in there. Um, in the sense that you can fish it, but the water's so low, fish are really spooky. So you just really got to work hard and find the few spots where you can cast without spooking the fish. But still one of my favorite places to spend a little bit of time. I'm Fred Rowe from Sierra Bright Dot Fly Fishing Guide Service. I can be found on Instagram, Facebook, or on my webpage at sierrabrightdot.com or on skippablenews.com, youtube.com, sierrawave.net or laughing-parrot.com <laughs> Hello, I'm Jeff Gabriel with the Eastern Sierra Interpretive Association and I am joined today with Jenna Wood, our Program Operations Director for ESIA. We're going to be talking about our Winter Adventure Series coming up in the winter of 2023. Jenna. The Winter Adventure Series is to highlight inspiring people in our community. To kick off this series, we've got Mackenzie Long, local author of This Contested Land. She'll be joined by Deanna Lynn Wolf from Unite the Parks, Rebecca Wong from Devil's Postpile National Monument, and this series kicks off on Thursday, January 5th. Doors open at 5.30 and show starts at 6. This is at the Mammoth Lakes Welcome Center. Tickets are $15 and children get in for free. If you're 21 and over, you get free beer and all will get a chance to win prizes from local businesses. So we'd like to thank our sponsors, Mammoth Mountaineering, Stellar Brew, Footloose Sports, Sage to Summit, Rolling Chef, Elixir Superfoods, and of course, Mammoth Brewing Company. For more information, visit sierraforever.org forward slash winner dash adventure dash series. I'm Jenna Wood. And I am Jeff Gabriel with the Eastern Sierra Interpretive Association. Educate, inspire, explore. <laughs>